Thank you, Judge. Um, I'm Susan Butterwick, and I am one of the referees in the juvenile division. I handle the docket of child welfare cases that are slated for reunification. So it's my docket that most of the cases that get referred to peacemaking will come from. Um, I, wa I want to introduce Kay Prentiss, rather than myself, actually, today. Um, Kay is going to be our trainer for those of us who will be here for the full three days. She's going to be here for the full three days. In the world of restorative justice, Kay is one of the, if not the best known, um, teachers and trainers and practitioners. Um, she has studied restorative justice in peacemaking for a number of years. She has gone back in her learnings to the indigenous tribal roots that all of this comes from. She has authored several books on peacemaking. Uh, she teaches peacemaking at universities and to groups like us um, throughout the United States and internationally as well. She began her career actually in restorative justice um, by working for nine years, many years ago, with the Minnesota Department of Corrections in the position of restorative justice planner. Kay came to Ann Arbor and trained our first group of peacemakers a year ago. And we have been, as Judge O'Brien mentioned, providing peacemaking in the um, divorce, custody, probate, civil dockets until this year when we began, uh, and we're about to begin, we've started with a few test cases, and when we have more facilitators trained, we will, beginning, we will be beginning to do many more cases on the juvenile court docket. Um, so we're honored and um, extremely pleased to have Kate here again this year to share her skills and her wisdom and her time with us. So I will turn it over to Kay. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> I'm really delighted to be here. And in introductions, they're always trying to make you sound like something really extraordinary. But the fact is, I'm just an ordinary human being. And the, the kind of work that we're talking about here uh, can be done by ordinary human beings, that this, this work that we're talking about accesses our, um, the wisdom that each of us has as individuals, and it's not about our, our resume <laughs> and, and those kinds of things. But um, so it'll be about accessing that collective wisdom today. So um, I just want to say thank you to all of you for being here and also want to express my gratitude to the, the air that we breathe and the, the trees that surround us, the, the green that's coming back for us after uh, winter and you know for all the plants and animals that, that share this earth with us. And also just an appreciation for those who have come before, whose, whose shoulders we stand on, and who uh, in, some, in some magical way inform the, the wisdom that we bring to the, the work that we do. So uh, just really, really happy to, to be here with you. I'm just going to quickly give you an overview of what we're going to do today, and then we're going to go right to uh, our circle. So, um, what we're going to do this morning is spend some time actually experiencing the circle so that you will physically understand what that process is when we talk later about the, the project and the examples of some of the families that are, uh, ex have experienced this process and that we're hoping will experience the process. So, um, Experiencing it will also be an opportunity to build connections and understandings that support uh, the outcomes of the, the good work that, that you're doing all the time. So after we sit in circle and experience that process, we'll come back uh, to being in a big group and um, there'll be some explanation around the project, uh, a little bit of explanation of structure of the the process of circle and an opportunity for you to ask some questions about what we're up to. Yeah. <laughs> 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 
for all these wonderful conversations. Um, okay, so what I want to do is just take a few minutes, now that you've experienced Circle, take a few minutes to just talk to you about the, the logic and structure of the process, and I think it will make more sense because you've had an opportunity to actually experience the process. So uh, the page after your agenda is an image that I use to um, give a sense of the, the circle process. It's an image of a tree. The root system of this tree are the shared values. Those are the kinds of values that we talked about that represent who we are in our best. When we're at our best, what are the values that we try to bring? to our interactions with others. Uh, we find those to be universal, that the kinds of words people use when they're asked about uh, a question about what value they want to bring in a particular circumstance or values that represent them when they're at their best, uh, the same kinds of values come up no matter where I am, whether it's with a group of youth in prison or a group of folks in a church uh, or a group of folks who work in um, helping professions, those answers are always the same. So we think that these uh, these are indeed shared values. Um, I personally believe that they're in our genes. Human beings evolved in community. Our genes have to carry the information for how to be successful in community, and that's what these values describe. Uh, also acknowledging that's not always how we walk around, but that but deep inside us, we do have the knowledge of. Um, these values. So the shared value is a very, very important part of the circle process that uh, my definition of the circle is it's, it's a, an intentional process designed to help us step in the direction of our best self from wherever we are. Um, accepted right where we are, but everything in the circle is designed to help us step in the direction of our best self. So that's in the root system of the circle. The indigenous teachings that this, uh, we think that this process actually also is universal in terms of our own histories. If any one of us went back far enough that we would find our people met in this way because it's such a fundamental, it, ancient communities had to work through issues and they couldn't throw people away. They had to figure it out and this is a pretty organic process for, for figuring it out. For me personally, I'm indebted to First Nations and Native American people because they had kept it alive. My ancestors lost it somewhere along the way as a process. Um, so there are a number of ideas coming from um, the worldview of indigenous communities that are also uh, deeply rooted in this process. Uh, one of those is the idea of profound interconnectedness. We are so profoundly interconnected you cannot drop out, kick out, or get rid of anything. We sometimes need a little space between people, but, but we are still connected. This idea of profound interconnectedness, connectedness, so that the solution is never get rid of in the circle process. Um, this is also the finding of quantum physics, right? that everything is profoundly interconnected across the world, and when the butterfly flaps its wings in Brazil, it may change the weather in China. Okay, it's profound interconnectedness, deeply rooted in this process. Uh, another um, core understanding from this process is the idea that we always come around again. We always come around again. It means that things are always changing, nothing is fixed, it's always changing, but there are cycles. There's a pattern to it, we always come around again. There's always another chance. Um, the idea of equality, equal dignity, and equal voice, deeply in this circle process, one of the indigenous teachings. Um, and the, the belief that there is an enormous amount of wisdom available to us if we can pull together the collective wisdom. We have a lot of individual wisdom, and that the circle process is very much about accessing the, the collective wisdom. But in order to access the collective wisdom, no one can go in knowing the answer. Right? Everybody has to be open to the possibility that the collective wisdom is greater than any individual wisdom, and so it's important in a circle process to enter without knowing the answer, because you want the answer to emerge from everybody's contribution, not to be determined by one person. So these shared values and the indigenous teachings are the root system of this process. They're not always visible, uh, but they're absolutely essential 
attitude, and they have a lot to do with attitude, how you sit in relationship to the family or youth that you might be working with. Okay? These ideas are really about our attitude and how we sit with, with the people. Then the, the, the output from a circle is the stuff at the top, connection, healing, community building, and collective action. That's what we're going to get out of this. And in order to get from this root system, this sort of attitude and relationship that we have with people to the output, the structural pieces that you use in the circle <clears throat> are the use of guidelines. Those are agreed. We didn't do that because of time constraints here, but normally go through a process of setting some agreements about how we're going to treat each other. The use of the talking piece. Uh, and we did have the conversation about values, which sort of took the place of the guidelines. Um, use of the talking piece, absolutely critical element of the, the circle process. The circle keeping refers to the role of the keeper, which is different than other kinds of processes. For instance, the keeper is a participant. Uh, as you probably experienced, the use of opening and closing ceremony. That, that, that is some way to mark the space. So you help people enter into a space where they're going to be more in alignment with their values in an intentional way than they normally are. And you mark the end of the space because if you're successful in the circle, people drop some of their masks and protections. They may need to put those back on going out into the world. And so you make sure you're very clear about opening and closing the space, because it's kind of a space apart. The pace changes, the encouragement to really live our values changes in the space of the circle. And storytelling. Storytelling is the source of wisdom in the circle. And by storytelling, we mean sharing stories from our own life. Sharing from our own life experience um, is the primary source of wisdom in the circle. So, um, so this image is a sense for me of, so we started with a little reading, that was our opening ceremony, we closed with the reading, our closing ceremony, we used the talking piece, we had a conversation about values, and we used stories from our own life experience, uh, for instance, proud moments in our lives that tell us a lot about how it is we want to structure our work so we get more of those proud moments. Um, okay, so that's the, the structure, general structure of circle. Um, on the right. oh, the, the sitting in circle without a table is very powerful. Um, there's some kind of accountability in that process that I don't completely understand, but it's clearly strong because people feel it. People feel the difference between having a table and not having a table. And sitting in a circle, uh, I liken it to the, if geese are, geometry matters. Geese are flying in a V formation and can fly farther and faster than if they lined up in any other way. And a circle seems to do that for human beings. That in that form, there's a sense of connectedness, there's a sense of common focus, because everyone's looking at the center, and there's an accountability because everyone can see everyone else. So any eye rolling or sort of side conversations become very visible, and that's a powerful kind of um, accountability in the process. And the, the flip side of that is that everyone feels seen. There are a lot of people who walk around in the world never feeling seen, but, but in the circle everyone is seen. There's something about the geometry of the circle that seems to be pretty powerful for, um, for human beings. We often use a centerpiece uh, that creates a, a point of focus, and so we ended up with our values in the center and the way we did the, the circles today. So a couple other pieces. Um, the, the emphasis in circles. So the second image, the next page here. And this comes from a teaching I got from a, a First Nations person. And so the circle divided into four parts comes from a structure that's often referred to as the medicine wheel, which is a, a very powerful teaching tool for many uh, indigenous groups in North America. One particular teaching that uh, I got from him that's been very important for me in my work is the idea there are four parts to the process. The first, getting acquainted. The second, building relationships. The third, addressing issues. And the fourth, developing action plans or in some circles that's um, reaffirming connectedness. Because not all circles make decisions, but the context where you're using it, you would be uh, making plans. And the teaching of the medicine wheel is about balance. That the four 
four parts need to be in balance. And so that means that we spend as much time on the right-hand side of, the cir of this um, circle, <laughs> of this medicine wheel, as we do on the left. And that that's very countercultural. As, as a culture, we pride ourselves on getting to the issues. But the difficulty is, um, particularly in the kinds of, when you're talking about juvenile justice and child protection, you're generally talking about chronic difficulties. Uh, and so there's lots of fear, there's lots of anger, there's lots of well-established patterns of dysfunctional interactions, and you don't break, those don't change quickly. They need a little bit of space to, to realign themselves. If you jump straight to the issues and it's not safe, people can't tell you the deeper truth. And in these complex situations, there's always deeper truth about what's going on. So what happens, in, and I believe that often it's not even a conscious withholding, that if it's not safe in the space, our body won't let us be in touch with the deeper truth. Right? We have very strong self-protective mechanisms. So that this work that you do on the right-hand side of this medicine wheel, of getting acquainted and building relationships, is to build safety so that you can get the deeper truth when you want to get to the issues and really understand what it is that, that needs to be worked on and needs to be addressed. But, and we, but we feel that stuff on the right-hand side is stuff, it's inefficient. We don't have the time to do that. That would be nice, but we just don't have the time. The trouble is that if you haven't created enough safety, when you try to do the issue analysis, you get a shallow analysis because people can't get to that, that really deeper stuff about what's going on or how they feel or what the truth is to them. And out of a shallow analysis, you necessarily get shallow plans. That's inevitable, and they won't really get you to where you want to go. And I think we, so we go back and we try again, and maybe we get a little bit deeper, but we're still not getting down far enough to, to really move it in a different direction. But I think we actually end up spinning between those two quadrants a lot. Um, and that turns out to be very inefficient. But, that in fact, there are times when you do the upfront work in a thorough way, then the work on the left-hand side of the wheel goes much more quickly. So uh, this is a core understanding of the, the peacemaking process that, that we're using. So it, doesn't, it begins with looking at strengths and begins with looking at what matters to people and what, what the meaning is for certain aspects of their lives. And then moves into, and then you go, you go back and forth a lot between building relationships and addressing issues, um, in order to get really deep into what it is that needs to shift in order for that that trajectory to change in a significant way. Um, so I mentioned that the also the the facilitator in these processes is also a participant. So facilitators share their own stories. They can share their own perspectives. They're very much a part of it. The, the tradition in Western society, the idea of neutral, actually doesn't work very well if you think about everything being profoundly interconnected. And so the approach in a circle is that you still care about bias. Bias is a huge issue that you're concerned about. But the commitment is that you're committed to the well-being of everyone in the circle. So it's a, a sense of being all partial instead of uh, impartial, and that's it. A, a different role in the, in this process. Um, one of the things about the circle is that the more diverse the perspectives, the richer the dialogue, and the greater the opportunity for new insight. So you're trying to get more perspectives into a circle rather than trying to narrow things down. Um, because the, the more perspectives, the richer the dialogue, the greater the opportunity for new insight. Um, that new ideas come from difference. They don't come from sameness. If you think the same way I do, one of us is redundant. <laughs> so we're really looking in this process to bring in um, as many perspectives as you can to because that informs the, the collective wisdom. Um, I, another thing I want to be very clear about is circles are never about persuasion. That is not the point. You don't enter a circle to persuade others. You can enter a circle with all of the passion of how you see something 
and then you're asked to listen with the same passion to how other people see it and see what emerges from those different perspectives. But circles are not about persuasion. Just as this uh, experience today is not intended to be persuading you to anything. It is to offer something to think about and for you to say, okay, that piece connects for me, but also say, that one doesn't at all. You can leave it. You are invited to make sense for yourselves out of what you hear, because I believe I have nothing new to teach anybody. I think if it really resonates for you, it's because you knew it already. Right? You knew it already. So pay attention to the things that you knew already. The things that you don't, you don't need to fight with them. You can just say, no, that one doesn't work for me, and I can leave it here. Maybe somebody else can pick that up, and it makes sense for them, and it, it helps them to live in a good way and to show up in their work uh, in a good way. So circles are never about persuasion. They're always about offering. Here's a perspective. Here's what it looks like for me, but not assuming that that's what it looks like for anyone else in the circle and being open to listening to what, what others see and then allowing it to just move organically to what you can see together. We find there's always something that we can see together that we can that we can find common ground. And it starts with the values. The values establish a space of common ground. And from there we can find out what other common ground do we have so that we can come to agreement about how we're going to, to move forward together. Um, okay, that's as clear as everybody. <laughs> that's as much as I thought would be needed here this morning.